some time to pray. I believe that that's what it is, getting the word of God, the lead of God's word, and then seasoning it with a place of prayer and allowing God to work in us. In Mark chapter number 10, verse number 46, and we'll read to verse number 49. The word of God says, and they came to Jericho, and as he went out of Jericho with his disciples, and a great number of people, blind Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, sat by the highway side, begging. And when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. And many charged him that he should hold his peace. But he cried the more a great deal, Thou son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus stood still and commanded him to be called. And they called the blind man, saying unto him, Be of good comfort, rise, he calleth thee. Amen. And Jesus stood still. I just want to look at that, that phrase in a couple of different places tonight. Of seeing God stand still. Uh, you, you know, the world in which we live, it, it's, it's such a busy life. And, and uh, uh, there's some things that we know about life. Or the, we know about the, the laws of life. But we know about the laws of, of physics and science and mathematics. It's so powerful and fascinating. But, but one of the, 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 the laws that we know about is that which Isaac Newton gave us. Do you remember that with the apple? Amen. He gave us the law of motion, gravity and motion, that, uh, that, that we live in a world of motion. Uh, Newton's law says that a natural music moving object cannot be stopped in its course of movement unless an intervention takes place or something interrupts its process. I'm talking about the law of motion, things happening and serving a God that certainly is a God of motion. And, 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 and He's on the move and He's working. And the only thing that can stop the law of motion is when something interrupts its process. Ah, oh, praise God tonight. I'm glad that I serve a God of motion. I'm glad I serve a God of action. Are you? Amen. He's on the move. He's on the go. He's an action God. Amen. But, but I believe this. Uh, I, well, let me not get ahead of myself. The Bible says in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And the earth was without form and void. And darkness was upon the face of the earth. And the Spirit of God moved. Amen. We serve a God of movement, of action, of motion. Uh, Newton's law says that action, okay, uh, the law of motion, it's going to keep on moving unless something interrupts it. I believe that those same laws, Brother Eli, apply to God. He's a God who's on the move. He's hovering. He's working. He's moving. He's walking. Sister Beverly, His Spirit is flowing. Amen. I, I believe this tonight, Sister Stacy, that the only way that we can uh, uh, see God stop at our need is if we interrupt Him. And uh, I hope it makes sense as we look at uh, that we, uh, the Bible says we live, we move, we breathe, and in Him we have our being. Amen. He's a God of, of perpetual, continuous motion. He never sleeps. He's always awake. Uh, uh, he's omnipresent. That means He's everywhere at one time. He's uh, uh, omniscient. He knows everything. He's uh, 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 omnipotent. Uh, that means that He's all-powerful. Uh, have you ever met someone that seems like they never slow down? You ever meet someone like that? Maybe you're a child like that, or maybe you had a child like that, constantly on the go. You can relate to that. Amen. So, uh, 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 it takes an interruption to stop movement. I believe this tonight, that we can interrupt God. And He will stand still, He will pass by, He will minister for us. Sometimes we just need to interrupt God. Amen. Just we need to let Him know that we need Him, we want Him. And, uh, 
Can you imagine bringing God to a grinding halt? I mean, that's just amazing. Can you imagine a train chugging down the track, Brother David, and all of a sudden it puts the brakes on and you hear the squealing and the squeaking of that, but all of a sudden it comes to a grinding halt. I wonder if we can do that to God. I believe we can. I believe it's possible. But will we? So I look at this uh, blind Bartimaeus. And I find that the Bible says that Jesus is coming to Jericho. And he went out of Jericho with his disciples. And the Bible says that there was a great number of people. And there was blind Bartimaeus. No, probably in, in the Word of God we think of him most, a blind man. He has given a name, Bartimaeus. And, and I don't know all the details of why maybe he was given a name, but he definitely brought God to a halt. And maybe Brother Justin, that's why his name is given in the Word of God. But we know that there he was. And I want you to, if you would, use your imagination with me. Here he is, this man who is blind. And can you imagine that you can't see anything around you? I'm thankful for glasses these days. But I'm not blind, Sister Rachel, by any means. Uh, but can you imagine, Sister Beverly, what it would be like never to be able to look at the face of your loved one, never, Brother Dennis, to look at your surroundings and identify uh, by, by seeing what it is. And so here it is that, 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 that Barnabas, he wanted to be healed and he knew that God could heal him. He had heard Brother Craig and what God had done for other people. And, 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 and his sense of hearing is great because when you lose, one sense, another one becomes very acute in its nature that it tunes in, but amen. So here it is, his ears are probably very good uh, at, at hearing and picking up things that no one else knows because he can't rely on his eyes. He has to totally rely upon his ears to know what's happening round about him. But now there's a little bit of confusion because uh, there are disciples and there's a great number of people. Where is Jesus? I mean, there's people everywhere and he's tuning in to hear the voice of God and he's trying to figure it all out. But, but, but he knows Jesus is here, but he doesn't know where. There's so much background noise. There's so much action that's happening. And so he begins to cry out, Jesus! Jesus, thou son of David! He's yelling out in every direction trying to seek for God. He knew that if he could stop the Lord, that the Lord would minister to his name. The Bible says that the more that he cried out, that there were many that charged him that he should hold his peace. Now, if you really needed God tonight, if you knew he was passing by and he could open your blinded eyes, you think you would holler out for him? Amen. Amen, I would, Sister Dot. Amen, I'd holler out. I want God to touch me. Amen, there are some here tonight that you deal with discouragement. Some here tonight you, just, you deal with situations that you'd rather not have to deal with. Amen. I want you to know that they don't have to be that way tonight. The Master is here. Amen. And He's on the move, but you've got to call out upon Him. And you have the power and you have the ability by faith to stop Him. Even if you may say, well, Brother Seville, I don't want to hold things up this evening or this or that. We can be full of lots of things that are around us that can silence our voice. But the Bible says that Bartimaeus said, although they charged him to be quiet. Come on, Bartimaeus. There's lots of people here. Don't make a skeptical body yourself. Jesus is busy. Uh, everyone knows that you like to see him. But please, just be quiet. There's always what rags to throw on your fire, isn't there? There's always someone to discourage you. There's always someone that will give you a hindering word. Well, well you can't. God's not concerned about that. Or, or God, that's insignificant. God has other things to do. But he, he, this really isn't the time or the place. The Bible says, Brother Justin, Bartimaeus wasn't discouraged. 
But the Bible says that he cried out the more a great deal. Jesus! Jesus! Jesus, the son of David! And the Bible says that when he did a great deal more, what happened? And Jesus stood still. You may say, but so God already cried out to God. I've already cried out to God. Maybe you didn't cry out a great deal more in our past. You want to bring God to a halt? Then maybe you need to cry some more. And maybe it needs to be more intense and more from the depth of your soul and greater in volume than it's ever been before because the Bible says, and Jesus stood still and he commanded him to be called. And they called the blind man saying, be of good comfort, he calleth thee. Amen, he calleth thee. Amen. The Bible says that Jesus immediately, because of his faith, he received his sight. Uh, Brother David, wouldn't you like to hear someone say, Jesus wants you? He stopped. He heard your cry. He heard your cry, Sister Stacy. Come on. Uh, uh, he, he heard you. Uh, you brought him to a standstill. And because of your faith, you're going to receive what you desire of the evening. I believe that right here, right now, right in this sanctuary, if you and I would get serious with God Almighty, amen, and if we would lift our voice and we would intensify ourselves and we would reach out in faith that we can bring God to a standstill. What do you need tonight? Bringing God to a standstill. We all know the story of Mark chapter number 5, verse number 25 through verse number 34 of the woman with the issue of blood 12 years, suffering many things and many physicians, spending all and nothing better, but rather grew worse. But when she heard of Jesus, she came behind the press and touched his garment. For she said, If I touch but his clothes, and I shall be whole. And straightway the fountain of her blood was dried up, and she felt in her body that she was healed of that plague. And Jesus, immediately knowing himself that virtue had gone out, turned him about in the press and said, Who touched me? And his disciples said unto him, uh, Thou seest the multitude thronging thee, and saith, Who touched thee? And he looked round about him to see her that had done this thing. But the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing what was done in her, came and fell down before him and told him of all, all the truth. And he said unto her, Daughter, that faith hath made thee whole. Go thy way, uh, 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 go in peace, uh, uh, and be whole uh, of thy plague. Amen. Find that here it is, the woman with the issue of blood. She brought Jesus to a standstill because she reached out in faith and she touched him. Amen. I believe tonight if we would reach out in faith, amen. I don't care what, what's around us, I don't care what our past is behind us, I don't care how we feel. She was weak and she was tired, uh, but she reached out in faith and she touched the hem of his garment and he stopped. Everybody else had to stop too. There was a throng of people round about him. But he stopped. Because someone reached out in faith and touched him. God is on the move, brother. God is on the move, sister. But our faith can stop him. Our faith can stop him. I love what Deuteronomy chapter number 32, verse number 11 says. It says, as an eagle stirreth, or she wakes up her nest, fluttereth over her young, spreadeth abroad her wings, taketh them, beareth them on her wings. Let's stop for a minute. So she, she, she stirreth, or she wakes her nest. What does that, that fluttereth mean? 
So here it is, Mama Eagle is flying Sister Stacy over her nest, and she begins to wake those that are in her nest. But the Bible says that she fluttereth, or what that means is she hovers, or she breathes upon them. I believe that tonight that God is passing by. Amen. And we are the nest. Amen. He wakes us, Brother David, and then he hovers over us and he breathes on us and says, here I am. What do you need? Amen. You are his child tonight. He's hovering over you. He's pausing for you. Amen. He's about to go and fly and continue to move on, but he's hovering. What do you want while he hovers over top of us? Amen. He stops by long enough to hover over us and to wake us up to his presence. And he says, I'm passing by. Now would you move with me? Sometimes we just need to be woke up. My wife need to be woke up. Wake me up. I'm hovering. I'm visiting with my presence. I'm Third thing I want to look at in the final thing this evening is this. The Bible says in Luke chapter number 7, verse number 11 to 15, And it came to pass the day after that he went into a city called Maine, and many disciples went with him and much people. Now when he was come nigh to the gate of the city, behold, there was a dead man carried out, the only son of his mother, and she was a widow, and much people of the city was with her. And when the Lord saw her, he had compassion on her. And he said, weep not. And he came and he touched the buyer, the, the casket. And they that bare him stood still. God stands still. God brings everybody else to stand still. <coughs> and he said to the young man, arise. And the one that was dead sat up and began to speak. And the Bible says that Jesus delivered him unto his mother. Are you weeping over lost hope? Are you weeping over pain of people or predicaments? All you need is for Jesus to stop. And he changes your predicament. That's all you need. Is there a desperate person here tonight that would cry out to God? Cry out even the louder and see Him stop. Amen. Is there someone that will say, I need a touch that only God can give me? I've been burying it in my body too long. I've spent more than I should have spent. Nothing's helped. It's only gotten worse. I'm pressing on to Jesus. And I'm going to touch Him. I'm going to bring him to the Tonight, may I just arrest our attention for a few moments? Do I have some folks in here that would say, I want to bring God to a standstill tonight? There's some situations, there's some needs that in the movement of life and a God who's on the move, I just need to stop him. I need hope restored. I need healing. I need a touch. And I won't let anything else hold me back. Tonight there's no fanfare. I simply want to do this for folks who want God to stop. Would you step out of your seat right now and make your way to the altar and say, God, here I am. I want you to stop by the seat. I want you to meet my need. I'm going to touch you. I'm going to cry out till you pass by me. If that's you, we're together into a place of prayer this evening. Everybody who will, amen, let's gather in. I'm praying the Lord to stand still this evening. Amen. Don't worry about music tonight. Let's worry about prayer tonight. Amen. Don't worry about anybody else tonight, but let's worry about us and God this evening. Amen. As our faith reaches out and touches heaven. Amen. Let's gather in. Hallelujah.